Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me today. My name is Amy Jaramillo, and I am honored to tell you that I am the founder of Body Science. Uh, I'd like to start by just talking about health for a few minutes, talking about medicine for a few minutes, and talking about the fact that the average appointment with a doctor is 14 minutes. And the average person makes it to their doctor three to four times a year, meaning your health needs typically get addressed in an hour or less per year, right? <laughs> Stunning, right? So then I imagine, what is it like? And I'd like for you to imagine as well, if you actually get healthy. So what does that mean? What, what are the symptoms that are actually plaguing us at this point? Fatigue, difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep. For some of us, it's constipation. For some of us, it's migraines. For some of us women, it's irregular menstruation and cramping and things that go along with that. Can we fix these things in 14 minutes at a time? Because for me, I have a hard time doing my hair in the morning in 14 minutes. I have a hard time making and eating my breakfast in 14 minutes. So I get that you can do things in 14 minutes, but the question is, can you do them thoughtfully, carefully, and actually get good results? And in medicine, with complex conditions, or the kind of stuff that we're dealing with now, it's pretty tough. So if, if I could, if you don't mind, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. Can I do that? Yes. Thank you for that. Uh, I come out of corporate America. I spent 15 years over there. And what I saw a lot of, I saw a mismatch between treatments and how people were being selected. And I saw a lot of business dictating those decisions insurance type of things dictating those decisions. And for me, one of the reasons I stepped out is because fundamentally that just wasn't aligned with what I thought was going to get people better as well. My mom, um, my mom had a very, very difficult menopause. So what does that mean? <laughs> I, when I grew up, my mom was super family woman, like she was the, the embodiment of being a mom, taking care of my brother and I, taking care of my dad. Uh, when I got to college, my mom started dealing with menopause. I wasn't really clear on hormonal imbalances at the time, um, nor did I really understand how much hormonal imbalances can take over a life. My mom started having difficulty sleeping. Uh, she started developing or she started gaining a lot of weight that she couldn't get back off again. Uh, she started getting fatigued all the time and she started getting kind of anxious and depressed. That was not the woman that I knew prior to that. So the process, here's what it looked like. It looked like her going to the gynecologist, right, and saying, hey, I've got these symptoms. I think something's wrong. Having tests run to hear, there's nothing wrong with you. Can I just ask for the women that are here, how many times have you gone in to the doctor knowing that something is off? Running tests, all to hear that the tests are normal. Anybody in this room? Right, ex right exactly. The way that story played out for my mom, uh, she wound up on medication to sleep. Uh, she wound up on medication for depression and anxiety. I think the time that I knew, I knew throughout the process that she was having a hard time. I just didn't know what to do about it. We'd gone to a gynecologist together to ask. The gynecologist referred her to a psychiatrist. My mom had never previously had any kind of conditions like this. My mom and I were sitting on the sofa. This is about three years after that, that period of time. She was describing for me that she got herself to such a desperate place on antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications, on sleeping medications, right, gaining weight, couldn't lose weight, that she drove her car on a bridge to the end, to the side, and opened her door and thought to jump off. And I think it was at that moment for me that I decided I would get involved with functional medicine and I would find a way to start understanding and ultimately getting involved in the treatment of these imbalances because the takeaway that I had is that no woman or man, no person 
ever go through that situation again. Right? So when I think about what I envision, something more than a 14-minute approach to healthcare because it's just not working. So can I tell you a little bit about the system that I work with? Yes. Okay. Here's what I know to be true. I know in general medicine right now is about matching pills to symptoms, right? It's not about the symptoms. The goal is not to treat the symptoms because even though it's a treatment, it's not a cure and the conditions continue to progress. Who in this room has the symptoms of something that could be thyroid or something that could be reproductive hormone or something that could be a sugar imbalance? Let me name them for you and let's see, right? Who over here lays down in bed at night but feels wired and tired and just can't sleep? Anybody? Who over here, you can keep your hands up, please. <laughs> keep your hands up for me. Cause let, let's, get a, let's get a look at this whole thing, right? Uh, who over here doesn't really eat a lot, but in spite of it, has a hard time losing weight? Okay. Who over here can basically smell a cookie and gain weight? <laughs> right? Anybody in the room that has hot flashes? Anybody in the room that wakes up with bags under their eyes and water retention? Right? Anybody that eats a sandwich in the afternoon or any kind of carbs and then feels super sleepy afterwards? These are common hormonal changes that go on in bodies and the question is, why is this happening? It looks to be a function of inflammation. So that's to say the medical community at large understands at this point that inflammation is damaging bodies. So let's talk about what that means. Think about going outside and then grabbing a branch on a tree and pulling it down. No matter how much you pull, until you break that branch, you can let go and it will spring back up. That is symptoms becoming syndromes. Now imagine you pull it down so hard it breaks. That is when syndromes progress into disease. Our goal, right? Identify the root cause of symptoms and treat that root cause rather than band-aiding it and waiting for it to progress. So are we seeing these kinds of conditions now? Sure we are. There are things like attention deficit disorder, right? There are things like leaky gut. Uh, diabetes has been classified as that type of condition. There are so many conditions right now that look to be secondary to inflammation. And I can tell you now, having worked with thousands of patients, these conditions are not just treatable, they are reversible. However, the key, you have to identify the root cause. And here's my question. Does anybody think that you could effectively identify a complex root cause in 14 minutes or less? <laughs> right? And that's kind of what's happening, right? That's why we're sick and getting a little bit sicker. How about if we do this? Metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is when a body is breaking. It's the same thing as that tree branch, right? It's a body that's bending, bending, bending until finally it snaps. Metabolic uh, syndrome is the process up to that point. It's the time where people start having thyroid dysregulation and or blood sugar changes, increase in blood pressure, and a change in lipids. Here's the alarming thing. Do this for me. Turn to the person on your left. Go ahead, say hi. Hi. Turn to the person on your right. Hi, how you doing? 35% okay. of Americans will develop metabolic syndrome in their adult life as a result of inflammation. So, one of two things is true. Either one of the two people that you just looked at will develop metabolic syndrome, or you will. A lot of the symptoms that we are treating currently, anxiety and depression, for an example, is a common secondary symptom of inflammation. It doesn't change the fact that almost 30% of Americans are currently on medication for anxiety and depression. Right? That's the Band-Aid concept. Find a symptom and put a Band-Aid on it instead of looking for the root cause and actually addressing it. Can I tell you about, I tell you, why don't I tell you about a patient? Can I tell you about a patient? So you heard about my mom, and that's a pretty common story. It's something that I see routinely. Reproductive hormonal imbalance uh, for women after menopause or after pregnancy, for men in andropause, that kind of spirals 
once the first domino falls, right, that's metabolic syndrome, once the first hormone dysregulates, other ones do. You guys know it, or I'll ask, do you know it? Uh, if you think back a couple of years ago, what was your first symptom? Was it that you woke up in the morning and you just felt tired more so than you used to? Or by midday, if you didn't have that cup of coffee, you just felt like you were gonna crash? Or was it instead that occasionally you started getting headaches even though you didn't previously have them? Was it the fact that before you would go to the bathroom regularly every morning and now you feel more constipated more frequently? Is it the fact that you never had hot flashes before but now you do? Because if you look at how bodies and inflammation work over time, typically you can think about the first symptom and how it's progressed since that point, either because that symptom has gotten worse or so many new symptoms have come on in spite of 14 minutes worth of the option to match a pill with that. So just to give you an example of this, uh, I had a woman that had come into the practice about six months ago, 22 years old. Uh, she has been on anti-anxiety and depression medications since she was 12. Uh, and as well, she had some issues as far as irregular menstruation. Her chief complaint was neither of those two things. Her chief complaint is that she was getting sick all the time. She would get a cold, the cold would go away, she'd get another cold, and this thing would just continue to spiral. The actual issue happened to have been leaky gut. Right? So that's to say, testing, diagnosing, and treating, she got off all of her medications. And she didn't get off her medications because she decided, I just don't want to be on medication. Her symptoms resolved, right? That's the belly brain connection, right? That's how that works. And it's been shown clinically, proven clinically, that that link exists so many times now. I'll give you another example. Um, a 15 year old boy that had come in in November um, that was having a hard time struggling in school and was being worked up for medication for attention deficit disorder. Uh, what we found out was it was a, it's called gut dysbiosis. It's when he's not making the enzymes, he can't break down the food that he needs to. The long and short of the story. When that was corrected, he graduated this last year, top of his class. I reframe that, most improved student in his class. So what's the point in this whole thing, right? The point is getting better. Whether you are sick and you wanna get healthy, whether you've got symptoms and you don't want them to progress, whether you're healthy and you just want to stay healthy. The key is identifying the root cause. And at Body Science, what I've been working on, and again, what I'm so happy uh, to have developed is a system that identifies the root cause and then matches the appropriate treatment with it, a body blueprint because the goal is not to mask symptoms with Band-Aids and allow syndromes to progress to disease. Can we all agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> instead, our goal, our mission, moving forward with almost 25% of women in this country on thyroid medication, one in four, one in three of us on anti-anxiety medication, and more than one in three that will develop metabolic syndrome at some point in our lives, our goal now is cure-focused medicine. Here is my question. If you are that person, right, that is looking at your symptoms and thinking, I want to own my health, I want more information, I want to actually know what the real root cause is and fix it. If you're that person, will you stand up? If you know somebody that would benefit, would you please stand up? And if you feel like this is the time for the medical system to make a little bit of a change and for us to advocate for our own health, know what's the, the real cure so we can go in and fix it, then make sure you stand up. Because this is our time to move forward with a new way of getting ourselves healthy and staying healthy. Thank you guys. Woo!